You're welcome to Sarah TV, Mr. Farouk. Thank you for having me. Uh, so you are the country, for, country director of Pathfinder International Nigeria. Can you tell us what you've been doing in the country so far? Okay, so Pathfinder is an international non-governmental organization uh, with uh, a mission to ensure that every woman, every girl, and every man all over the world have access to uh, good quality sexual reproductive health information and services. We are working currently in up to 20 countries, including in Nigeria, where we have operations in about 17 states. And uh, we have projects in maternal newborn health, in HIV AIDS, in family planning and contraception, and in advocacy. Uh, in Lagos State, obviously, we are currently working with uh, civil society organizations under an umbrella uh, that's called the uh, Family Planning uh, uh, Advocacy Working Group. And there's also a media uh, working group where we furnish them, you know, with information and the right tools and resources, you know, for them to advocate for better policies, better funding for family planning programs in the state. So what's the position of Pathfinder International when it comes to birth control? Well, uh, Pathfinder, uh, and you know, I've been working in Pathfinder for about eight years now, we call it differently, we don't call it birth control, because birth control suggests, uh, you know, a kind of top-down, uh, 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 you know, if, if, you, if you like, you know, something that is forced, you know, people to control, the word control, uh, you know, sounds really very harsh and negative. Uh, we, we, at Pathfinder, we see family planning as a human right, as a right of every woman, every man, every family to be able to have the number of children that they can cater for. So uh, the basic premise, you know, is that there's a lot of ignorance, you know, about birth control or, you know, as we call it, or, or birth spacing, as I would prefer to call it. What we intend to do and what we're about is to make sure that every woman, every man, every family has access to information and services to be able to regulate their own fertility. So if you want to have uh, children, you're having them by choice and not by chance. Not because you do not know that there's a way you can prevent having unwanted children and certainly not because you cannot uh, afford it or you do not have access you know, to the service. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's within that, you know, purview that we see family planning, you know, as a human right that every individual, you know, should enjoy. Nigeria is estimated to have a population of about 190 million people. Yeah. How can this translate to economic development? So uh, for, uh, the, the absolute number, you know, of the population in itself is not a problem uh, if it goes uh, hand in hand with economic growth and development. Nigeria's population is quite huge. Uh, you know, it grows, we have an annual population growth rate of about 3.2 percent, you know, uh, and it's estimated that by the year 2040, uh, you know, Nigeria's population would surpass that of the United States of America, you know, which is about 400 million currently. Uh, the, the problem, you know, is that our economy is not growing at 3.2%, unfortunately. Our economy is growing much, much lower. In fact, our economy was in negative growth, you know, we are in a recession. We just got out of that recession recently. And uh, if I remember the latest figures, you know, I saw a couple of months back, I think we grew in the last quarter by about 0.6 or 0.8%. You know, that's much, much lower than the economic growth. So we have many, many, many more people than we have economic opportunities. So there are a lot of dependents. You know, the people that are working are very few. The people that are not working and not adding any value to the population are very, 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 very many. And unfortunately, you know, the greatest number of, the greatest segment of this population are so-called young, you know, people that are very, very restless and do not have access to skills you know, and education, and so they cannot contribute meaningfully to the economy. And so, uh, and, and obviously they are a drain, you know, on the, on the resources, you know, of the government and, of, and also of the useful segment of the society, you know, that contributes to economic development. Uh, coming back to your question about how, you know, we can, we can turn this around, and we have a window of opportunity. If we can invest in this youthful population of ours that we have, 
uh, by providing them with good quality education, by providing them with good quality skills, you know, so that they can have jobs, especially in, 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 in IT, you know, and other uh, services, so that they can contribute meaningfully, you know, to the, to the, to the economy. And last but not least, we also invest in their healthcare, including access to family planning, because we don't want them, uh, you know, to be in the same uh, hole, you know, that we are in now. So uh, they, they, they can contribute meaningfully, you know, and increase the economy and increase the growth rate, you know, of the economy. And, and, and by that way, uh, uh, you know, we would have used, you know, the, that, you know, youthful energy that youthful zeal and turn it, you know, positively into economic development. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's, a sh it's a short window, you know, that we have. We have to act now. We have to make those investments, as I said, in their education, in their skills, in their healthcare, you know, and invest in family planning for them so that they do not have uh, a very, very high fertility rate that we have now and increase the population even, you know, further beyond what it is now currently. And that is called, uh, this concept that I just described is called the so-called demographic dividend. You know, you have a huge population, especially uh, that is mostly young people. You know, you can turn it from a burden into a, a positive dividend by making the investments. Well, we have to make the investments now. And unfortunately, the dividend may not show in the next 15, 20 years, you know, if we start the investment now. So it's a long-term thing uh, that, but we need to understand the concept and we need to make those investments now for us to be able to reap the dividend. Okay, so can you tell us about the FP 2020 goal? Well, uh, in 2012, uh, about 90 countries, uh, you know, met in London under the leadership of the British government and also the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and UNFPA, you know, obviously, and made a commitment that the over 120 million women and girls worldwide who currently do not have access to bath space and you know, family planning services you know should have that access by 2020 uh, and that was a big commitment you know that was made by all these 90 countries each country made a different commitment but the cumulative commitment is for all the 90 countries to be sure that by 2020 these 120 million women and girls you know have access to good quality family planning services uh, and you know coming back to nigeria you know the nigeria's commitment and contribution you know, to that FP 2020 goal is to make sure that 7 million women and girls who currently do not have access in Nigeria have access by 2020. And uh, if we do that, we reckon that we would be increasing our contraceptive prevalence rate, which is the number of women that currently use a modern method of contraception uh, from current 15% to 27%. That's almost doubling the, the contraceptive prevalence rate. Obviously, to do that, we'll have to make investments because we can't just wish it and it will happen. So the federal government uh, then in 2012 made a commitment that, okay, uh, every woman and every girl that wants, family, and every man as well that wants family planning services in government hospitals would be offered the service free. And what the government invested then was to make sure that all the, all the family planning commodities, from the injections to the pills to the loops, you know, to whatever method that you know, to the condoms, would be purchased by the federal government and distributed to the states so that they can take them to the health centers and, you know, provided free of charge, you know, to, 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 to anybody that needs them. Uh, that's the FP commitment, global, and then I've just described the, the national commitment. So it's, it's, uh, it was uh, reckoned, you know, that if, if we did that by 2020, uh, we would be reaching roughly about 7 million women and girls, which would, you know, help to, to contribute to the global 120 million. So how would you assess the progress of the FP 2020 in Nigeria? Uh, uh, unfortunately, the progress has been quite slow, to be honest, because the federal government that made the commitment so they made the commitment uh, to provide services free, to provide the commodities to the states free of charge, uh, comes with a huge financial uh, 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 burden. The government then reckoned that there was a funding gap of, I think, about uh, 40 million US dollars to be able to buy all the commodity needs that all Nigerians need 
you know, and I'm just talking about the public sector because the government obviously is not thinking about distribution to the private faci health facilities and private hospitals. Unfortunately, the government, the federal government has not been able to come up with the funding, you know, to match this commitment. So monies have been released uh, earlier on from 2012 to 2014 uh, through the SHOP program of the then, uh, you know, federal government. Unfortunately, in 2015, when the current government came in place, uh, it scrapped the SHOP program and with that went the funding, you know, for the commodities. Funding still comes through the Ministry of Health, uh, but it is not nearly enough you know, to provide all the uh, contraceptive needs of the country. Large parts of the contraceptive commodities are funded by donors, uh, which is not sustainable. Uh, uh, apart from that, you know, at the service delivery, so I've, I've, I've just described the commodity needs, which are, you know, what we need to give the service. At the service delivery point, you know, there is also many, many, many problems. So these commodities come from the federal government, from, from the federal medical store in, here in Lagos. It gets to the state capitals. Sometimes it sits down in the state, state capitals for up to two or three months before they are distributed to the health centers where the service will be provided. Because the governments at the state level have not made any arrangement or any budget you know, to, to transport those commodities. And when they eventually get to the, to the health facility, you find out that there are many, many healthcare providers that have not been trained adequately to provide, especially some of the newer methods. So the service cannot be provided. You find out that a lot of the health facilities uh, do not have the, the supplies and the you know, uh, uh, other you know, things that they need, like gloves, you know, like instruments. Uh, to provide the service. So there are a lot of issues, you know, with, uh, you know, getting that commitment. And a lot of it has to do with poor funding of healthcare generally, but especially family planning. What we have been doing, you know, is to, you know, direct our searchlight in that direction and do a lot of advocacy together with our civil society partners in the media, obviously, and other local NGOs that are working in this space to ensure that governments uh, at the federal and the state levels increases, uh, you know, funding uh, for, for, for service provision, for commodity logistics, for training, you know, for procurements, you know, and, and, and all that. So looking at the people who are supposed to be receiving the contraceptive, how would you rate the attitude of the people towards bed spacing, as you call it? So that is also one of the key issues, you know, because uh, you can put the service, uh, the best service in the health facilities, but you still need the women, you know, to come and access it. Uh, unfortunately, we have a very pronatal, you know, uh, uh, society where, you know, women and men families generally desire a very large, you know, family size for, for various reasons. Some are cultural, you know, some are religious. Uh, and, and I think, you know, uh, to a large extent, we have not quite done a lot of work, you know, to, to address that, you know. Even though family planning service is, uh, should totally be rights-based and voluntary, there's no coercion, you know, in it. Uh, there's a lot of myths and misconceptions. So some women and families believe that the modern family planning methods cause cancer. Some people believe that if you use a long-term method, for instance, that even if you discontinue using it, you may not be able to get pregnant. So these are some myths and misconceptions that we need you know, to address. Uh, but by and large, you know, I think a lot of the you know, issues uh, have to do with the fact that we just desire large family sizes. You know, it's embedded in the DNA of our culture and our religion. Uh, by the way, there are religious misconceptions also, you know, that say that some bath spacing or bath planning is, is, uh, is, is anathema, you know, especially to the major religions of Christianity and Islam, you know, in Nigeria. Uh, yeah, so, so the, obviously there's a lot of, uh, you know, behavior change work, you know, that needs to be done to address that. But it's a very, very long term, uh, you know, work that is really, really embedded in people's beliefs, you know, and, and cultures. So moving forward, what do you think can be done to, to make sure that the people subscribe to that spacing and the governments on their part do the funding adequately? 
I think we need to, we need to, if I can borrow the word of a teacher and a mentor, we need to ev evangelize, you know, family planning. We need to, to talk about it. Uh, uh, you know, we need to talk about it in the media. We need to uh, dispel, you know, the myths and the misconceptions, you know, about modern family planning. We need to take family planning away, you know, as a stand alone or as a health, you know, intervention and make it a development, uh, 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 you know, intervention. So we need to take family planning, uh, not away from the Ministry of Health rather, but we need to embed the family planning from the Ministry of Health into Ministry of Budget and Planning, into Ministry of Eco Economic Development, into Ministry of, of, uh, of, of Youth you know, and Social Development. We need to see it as a, a, you know, a broad-based, all-encompassing intervention. Uh, because the way we have looked at it you know, uh, uh, over time, you know, as a just as a single health intervention, obviously has not been working. So even if the, as you rightly pointed out, even if the commodities are, are available at the health facility, you know, we need to get into the communities and get people to access, you know, those services. We need to change the mindset of our people so that they know, you know, that uh, bath spacing is all about development, it's about their right to enjoy, uh, you know, their lives to the fullest potential and not to be encumbered, you know, with uh, large family sizes that they, in, in, in most cases, are not able to provide uh, for adequately. So, uh, on a final note, before we leave, uh, average Nigerian don't go to this government hospital. They prefer using the traditional best attendance. What is Pathfinder? Is Pathfinder International looking towards the direction of this best attendance, the traditional best attendance to work with them? Absolutely, yes. Uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, what you mentioned is true. Traditional bath attendants, you know, are uh, found in every nook and cranny of the country. And unfortunately, also, our women, especially in the rural areas, uh, you know, prefer this, you know, to, to patronize these traditional bath attendants for so many reasons. I think they are more accessible, they are, uh, you know, they are cheaper, they, they know the culture better, you know. Uh, they pamper these women and they provide them what they need. Unfortunately for them, uh, you know, they do not have the, the medical skills, you know, to be able to identify danger signs in pregnancy or in childbirth. And they definitely do not have the skills, you know, to treat those complications when they occur. Because childbirth is 93% uh, is uh, normal, normal means you know, that without any intervention, 93% of the time, you know, the woman can have, uh, you know, a childbirth without any intervention. Uh, in most cases, they are able to, you know, to, to get away with all the, <laughs> you know, all the things that they are doing. But in that 7% that complications will arise, uh, you know, if you do not have the skills to identify those skills and institute the right treatment, which is very medical, uh, you know, it can result in, in, in very, very severe injury or even death. You know, uh, the TBAs, as we call them, uh, whether we like it or not, you know, our women prefer to go to them. So at Pathfinder, we work with them. Uh, currently, we are working in, I, I, you know, in Cross River State, where we did a mapping of all the TBAs, all 2,700 of them. And we are equipping them with, uh, you know, skills to be able to identify danger signs of pregnancy. And we're also integrating them into the regular health system so that they know exactly which hospital is closest to them, so that if there's a complication and they identify it, they can quickly refer. Uh, the Cross River State Government is giving them incentives, you know, for referral. So for every referral that a TBA does, you know, she gets, you know, a, a certain token, you know, amount of money for her, for, 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 for her trouble. So we are not, uh, you know, uh, we, are, we are drawing them close to us and working in partnership with them. And over time, we hope, you know, to be able to, you know, kind of let them understand, you know, that this is a very highly, uh, 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 you know, technical area that only an expert, you know, needs to be involved in. Uh, you know, very frank policy discussions. Just a couple of months ago, uh, we had the vice president, you know, of, of, of Nigeria, uh, you know, openly, you know, uh, professing you know, that family planning is a big development intervention.
that the federal government of Nigeria is very, very interested in promoting. Uh, just before that, we had the minister of uh, the new, the current minister of finance, you know, saying that family planning is one of the best and most cost-effective, you know, interventions to help, you know, in economic development of the country. There are several policies, you know, there's a natural, national reproductive health, you know, policy under the current national health uh, strategic development plan. Uh, 2018 to 2022, I think, you know, family planning is embedded right there, you know, as a, a very, very strategic, you know, intervention to help with economic growth. So uh, our problem is really not the, not uh, a lack, you know, of policy or policy dialogue or policy debate. Our problem, you know, is, is much, much deeper. I think it has to do, uh, you know, with with the level of implementation. You know of the of the of the of the policies, I think. And again, you may uh, accuse you know civil society or NGOs of not doing enough to kind of monitor you know the implementation of such policies. But I, I believe our problem is really just one of funding. Quite honestly, the family planning program is very 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 nice on paper. It's very good on paper. If you see, the federal government already has said that there is a policy of providing the service free of charge. They are, for the past five or six years, they have been providing equivalent of about $4 million. I, I mentioned that most of the other money top up comes from donors, you know, to buy those commodities. The commodities come, you know, and they are distributed to the states. So the federal government has done its own part, you know, by fulfilling that, uh, 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 you know, pledge that they made, you know. But a lot of the states, you know, unfortunately do not... Uh, 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 provide adequate funding, you know, to take those commodities to the service delivery and make sure that the services are provided. You know, Lagos State, uh, uh, Lagos State, you know, uh, they have, a, they have, a, uh, and, and a few other states, not only Lagos, obviously, you know, have really stepped up. You know, basically as a result of some of the work, you know, that we're doing. The country is unfortunately very, very large. You know, we do not have the bandwidth, you know, to cover all sections of the country. Uh, uh, and there are some parts of the country that obviously have done much, much better than other parts of the country. And I imagine, you know, that if we do not have the same uh, level of uh, 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 effort, if you like, in all parts of the country, certainly some parts of the country will be drawing, you know, some other parts behind. That's, that's the reality. That's the reality. Yeah. So thank you very much thank for your time. Mm.